Hey there, I'm Dustin Rockford, one of our resident Ventus product specialists, and I'm thrilled to welcome you to our newly reimagined tutorial series with the goal of making learning Ventus even easier than before. Today, we will be learning how to prepare a lower third asset in Adobe Photoshop, importing that native PSD file into Ventus Designer, and then animating it using the Layers Editor. Subsequent videos in this series will continue building upon the basic concepts we explore today, and by the end of this video series, you should be well versed in the creation of basic art assets and animating them in Ventus Designer. Before we begin working in Ventus, we must first come up with a concept and design for what you want your final graphics to look like. You could use any graphics creation suite you like, however, for this tutorial we will be exploring a workflow that uses Adobe Photoshop. Once you have finished creating your visual design in Photoshop, you will need to prepare each of the elements you want to animate as a separate layer. This will all make sense once we start working in Ventus a bit later. As a best practice, try to be diligent when creating your layers by naming them. This will help you better organize your project once you import the PSD file into Ventus. It's worth mentioning that nearly all of the layer blending options available in Photoshop will be translated over to the layer editor when you import your PSD file into Ventus. However, Photoshop layer effects like shadows, blur, and distortion effects to name a few will not translate over natively to Ventus. If you would like these effects applied to your final design, those elements will need to be rasterized before you import your PSD file into Ventus. Additionally, any text you have created in your Photoshop project will be rasterized when you import it into Ventus. This means any of the text you have included as part of your PSD project will no longer be editable once imported into Ventus. The text tools built into Ventus allow you to recreate pretty much any of the text you've included as part of your PSD project, but with the flexibility to update, scale, and make changes in real time. Now that we have finished preparing our art assets, it's time to import them into Ventus. Let us begin by creating a new project in Ventus Designer. Give the project a name and fill in whatever relevant information in the Create New Project window you would like to include. Press the OK button and let's start building out our lower third animations. In this video, I will only be focusing on the Layers and Animation Editor, so let's switch the default layout to the Animation Workspace, which is in the Layouts section area along the top right of the Ventus Designer UI. For this tutorial, I am going to close the Hierarchy Editor and the Content Editor and delete the default 3D layer. So if you would like your interface to resemble the one I am using in this tutorial, I would recommend you do the same now. This can be done by simply clicking the X in the upper right corner of both editor panes and selecting the unneeded layer and pressing the delete key. Now that we've got our designer interface set up, it's time to import the Photoshop file we finished preparing earlier. This can be done two different ways. You can click the plus icon at the top of the layers editor and choose the Photoshop import option, after which you will need to manually select the file from the asset parameter in the properties pane, which you will need to locate using Windows Explorer. Now I'm going to delete the layer so I can show you the alternate and my preferred way of adding a Photoshop layer to Ventus Designer. The simplest way to add a Photoshop layer to your project is to simply drag the PSD file from Windows Explorer and drop it into the Layers Editor pane of Designer. This will not only create the Photoshop layer in your scene, but Ventus will automatically recreate a copy of the PSD file and add it to the Images folder as part of your Ventus project. Now that we've created our Photoshop layer and have our assets inside of Ventus, we can start animating. For this example, we are going to keep things simple and only animate the positions of different layers and their opacity. It can be quite tricky trying to animate black graphics on a black background, so we are going to add a 2D color layer above our new Photoshop layer so that we can more easily see what we're doing while animating. This can be done easily by clicking the Add Layer button and selecting Add a 2D Color Layer. I personally like to start by animating the largest elements of the graphic first and then add back the smaller elements after. So let's begin by hiding all of the elements in the Photoshop layer except for the lower third long rectangle layer. Now that we've got all of our extra layers hidden, we can start animating the big black rectangle. Click the small arrow next to the lower third long rectangle layer to expand its properties. Next, click the arrow next to the effect group property to expand it. Click the Add Effect and select the Distortion Effect from the list. Now that we've got the effect added to that layer, we want to add its Offset X parameter to the animation timeline. This is done by left-clicking on the Offset X parameter and dragging it onto the timeline at the bottom of the Designer UI. 
Now that the offset X parameter has been added to our animation timeline, we can animate that element coming into the scene. Before we start animating separate elements, we want to create a few animation states first. Click on the Logic View button in the Animation window. Next, we're going to add a Begin, Present, and End state. This can be done by double left clicking in the Logic View area or by pressing the Create State button. After we've got our three states added to the Logic View, we need to connect them to one another. Start by selecting the state S1 and then right click drag from that state onto S2. This will create the connection logic between those two states. Now, do the same for state S2 by selecting it, then right click dragging onto state S3. If you've got your connection logic set up properly, your setup should look like mine. Now, we want to hop back over to the view time mode and start animating things. You'll notice after switching back to the time view that there are now keyframes and states present in the timeline. If you notice your keyframes extend past the edge of the animation editor window, you can adjust this by using your mouse while hovering over the animation timeline. Scrolling the mouse wheel will zoom in and out, and holding down the mouse wheel and dragging will move the timeline around. We want to edit the keyframes for offset X to animate it in and out of frame. We will edit the first keyframe to be a value of 1, leave the second keyframe as value 0, and edit the third keyframe to be a value of 1 again. Now, if you scrub through the timeline, you will see the rectangle being animated in and out. The next element we want to animate is the sub lower third long rectangle. So let's unhide that layer and add the distortion effect to the layer as we did just a few moments ago. Once you've finished adding the distortion effect to the layer, add the offset X and offset Y parameters to the animation timeline. Now, let's edit the keyframes for offset X so the first value is 0.015 the second is 0, and the last is 0 0.015 again. Moving down to the keyframes for offset Y, let's edit the first to be negative 1.1, the second to be 0, and the last to be negative 1.1. The next element we're going to want to animate is the flag, so go ahead and unhide that layer from your Photoshop layers now. Let's add that distortion effect to the flag layer like we had before. After the distortion effect has been added, drag the offset X parameter into the animation timeline, and now it's time to edit the keyframes. The first keyframe will be set to a value of negative 1, the second will be a value of 0, and the third will be a value of negative 1. Moving down the list, we now need to animate the kilometers per hour layer. Start by unhiding that layer, adding the distortion effect again as same as before, and adding its offset X parameter to the animation timeline. Now we need to edit the first keyframe for that layer to be a value of a negative 1.1, the second keyframe to be a value of 0, and the third and final keyframe to be a value of negative 1.1. Next, we're going to be animating in the Ventus logo. Unhide the Ventus VX icon layer and add the same distortion effect from before, and then drag its offset X parameter into the animation timeline. Now we need to edit the keyframes for the Ventus logo, so keyframe 1 is value of 1, the second is 0, and the third is 1. Next, we're going to animate the text elements. Unhide the headline text layer, add the distortion effect, and this time, we're going to drag the offset Y parameter into the animation timeline. Edit the keyframes for the headline text, so the first one is 1.1, the second has a value of 0, and the third has a value of 1.1 again. Now 
And let's unhide the subline text layer, add the same distortion effect as before, and then drag the offset Y value into the animation timeline. Edit the keyframes for the subline text so the first keyframe has a value of negative 1, the second is 0, and the third has a value of negative 1. Only one more element left to animate. Let's unhide the speed kilometers per hour layer and expose its opacity parameter by opening the blending dropdown. Now, we want to drag the opacity parameter from the properties window down into the animation editor. Edit the keyframes for the opacity parameter we just added so the first value is 0, the second is 100, and the third is 0. Congratulations! We've just finished setting up the values for all the keyframes we need to create our final lower third motion graphics. Now, we need to offset some of the keyframes in the timeline so that the animation looks a lot more fluid and less chaotic. Let's start by dragging the S2 state over to the right to increase the length of the in animation. Let's left click on the S2 keyframe label and drag it five spaces over to the right so the S2 state now sits on the 15 line in the timeline. Next, we're going to drag the S3 keyframe label over so it sits at the 30 on the animation timeline. Now that we've got our keyframe values and timeline duration sorted out, it's time to start pushing keyframes around to tighten up this animation. We want the black and orange bars to come in first, followed by the other elements in an order that makes sense and is visually satisfying. Start by dragging the second keyframe for the lower third long rectangle back closer to the first keyframe so that this element appears first and finishes animating before the others. Next, let's move the first keyframes for the orange rectangle further up so that the animation starts after the black rectangle has finished. Now, drag the second keyframes for the orange rectangle back to speed up this animation. Moving down the list, we need to move the starting keyframe for the flag forward so it starts animating just before the orange rectangle finishes, and then move its second keyframe back so it completes before reaching the S2 state. Next we want to drag the first keyframes forward for the kilometer per hour rectangle, Ventus logo, and headline text, so they line up with the first keyframes for the long orange rectangle animation. Holding down the shift key allows you to select multiple keyframes in the timeline, which allows you to edit multiple keyframes at the same time. Now we want to drag the second keyframes for each of these layers back so we can speed up the overall animation. Move the second keyframes for kilometers per hour and headline text back so that they end halfway through the flag animation, and then move the second keyframe for the Ventus logo back so it finishes just before the two keyframes we were just editing. Only two more sets of keyframes left to adjust. Going down the list, move the first keyframe for the subline text over so it starts at the same time as the Ventus logo finishes animating. Now move the second keyframe back so it ends at the same time as the flag animation. Finally, move the first keyframe for the speed kilometer per hour opacity forwards so the animation starts at the same time the flag and subline text animations complete. And that's it! Now the last step in getting this animation completed is to mirror what we have done for the animations between states 1 and 2, so that the out animations between states S2 and S3 is essentially the same as the first, but in reverse. Harnessing the power of post-production, this part has been massively sped up. We're already well on our way to becoming an experienced Ventus animator, and I'm not going to bore you by explaining what we just did, but backwards. And voila! Now, we have completed the in and out animations for a slick new lower third graphic. If you switch back to the logic view in the animation window, you should now be able to trigger the different states we just finished animating. Try it out for yourself. Click the begin button and it will reset the animation, and then clicking the next button will transition between the different states and pause between each. The next video in this series will continue expanding on the concepts we just finished exploring. Next time, we will be making the same lower third except we will be taking advantage of the Ventus 3D layers, and far more of the built-in features Ventus offers. Download our free community edition of Ventus today to start creating your very own lower thirds and more. Please consider subscribing to our channel and hitting that notification bell to find out as soon as we upload new videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time.